Okay, so the lungs. Let's, let's look, look at the lungs in their big form. Let's call it gross anatomy of the lungs. The lung here. Not that lung. Okay, lung here. The, the right lung has three lobes to it. We have a superior lobe, middle lobe, inferior lobe, and they have these are called fissures. So this fissure is called your horizontal fissure. This one is the oblique fissure. Okay, so fissures in the lung. The left lung, as we said before, is smaller. Smaller lung here. Where there's an area here called the cardiac impression. That's where the heart kind of sits there on the left side. And it has two lobes versus three. So it has a inferior lobe and a superior lobe. Okay. And the fissure is an oblique fissure. Now, of course, the trachea, the, 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 the trachea comes down, splits into the primaries, like so, and they go, then they go in, all right? So, the area where the bronchi and pulmonary trunk vessels enter and leave. So this area right here, this area where these things enter and leave is called the lung's hy hylus or hilum, hilum of the lung, where the tubes enter the lungs. And the things that enter in that area is called the, the lung's root. All right, so know the hylus for me, know the lobes, know the fissures, know which one is smaller, which one is bigger, where is your cardiac compression as well in there. And in the lungs, this part is called the base. And the top part is called the apex, where it points. Apex, base, in the lungs. Some conditions that, that happen in this system. This is some clinical, clinical conditions that, that we have here. We have, you know, bronchitis, common. Bronchitis happens here where the cilia in the bronchi stop working. Similar as cilia stop moving. As a result, then the fluid in the bronchi becomes stagnant. And then this stagnant fluid leads to bacterial infections. That happens there inside your bronchi. Okay, that's bronchitis. Then you have this pen. You have your asthma. So asthma happens here when the bronchi or your bronchial. So it's a natural bronchial. Eventually, in, in asthma. The muscle in the walls of the bronchioles will squeeze and then it's pushed in this way. So then you have a narrow tube, tube to the narrow, that's asthma. It's being pushed in by, the, by when, when, when the asthma flares up. And so you narrow the airway. So you can't, you can't breathe, okay? That's the asthma right there. And then you must, must take a relaxant, cause the muscles to relax, or, or take norepinephrine, which again, can cause the muscles to relax. So you, you, you reopen up the airway. Tuberculosis, TB. This one is called by a bacterial infection, and this infection, okay, will cause the lungs to grow tubercles. So now you, you, you're replacing the lung by the dense, tough material called tubercles. So now the lung is not, not as elastic. You're, you're you're getting rid of alveoli. Okay, so then these, these tubercles over time, damage the lungs extensively enough that, that you can't 
the proper gas exchange, so a, a tuberculosis. Tubercles in the lungs caused by a bacterial infection. Then we have pneumonia. In pneumonia, imagine again that, that this is your alveoli. This is one, one, one alveolus. So here, in pneumonia, fluid accumulates inside the alveolus, inside the alveolus like this. And then with that extra fluid there, it's harder for the exchange to occur across the respiratory membrane, okay, because of the extra layer of fluid inside the lung. That's pneumonia. It can, call, can be caused by you know, bacterial or, or viral infections. And then we have emphysema. In emphysema, here again, imagine you have you know, many alveoli like this hanging out. This one is not called by smoking, by the way. So in emphysema, you destroy these, what's called septum, inside the alveoli. So now instead of having 300 million, you may have, you may have 100 million instead, because you, you turn, say, 100 into, into one, one big, big alveoli. And what happens is, is as you replace this, get rid of the septum, you also get rid of the capillaries that cover them. Okay? And without the capillaries, you have less gas, less respiratory membrane for gas exchange to occur. So you hear your loss, loss of septum, or septa. Is, is what we call emphysema. And then you have some lung cancers, three main types of lung cancers. Most common the most common form is called small cell carcinoma. Okay, this one happens when the cells in the bronchi become cancerous. They start to overgrow. Okay, so bronchi, bronchi cells, such as the one that, 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 that on, on the basal membrane part of it, become cancerous. You have your, so what else? You have squamous cell, you have your adenocarcinoma. Here, the glands, the mucous glands that make, make fluid in the lungs, those cells become cancerous. You know, they start to over multiply again and spread in the lungs. And the most, the most dangerous form of, of, the, of, of lung cancer is your. Let me. Sorry. None of us spoke wrong here. So, this one, the most, the most dangerous form is small cell carcinoma. Carcinoma, and that one is the one where your bronchi cells in the main part, in the, in the, like the primary or, or in your secondary bronchus, they start to go become um, cancerous and they spread aggressively, called metastasize. One up here that, that I meant to put there is, is your call your squamous cell. Squamous cell carcinoma, the most common type there, okay? where again, it's still cells in the bronchi that become cancerous, not, 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 not the same as, as these types, and they, and they also spread. Okay. So these are these three types of lung cancers. Okay, that's it for the respiratory system.